On this Summer League Defeat edition of Locked On Grizzlies, I'm going to do my best to not sob over a Summer League game that was lost by Memphis in overtime at the hands of the Miami Heat. I'm going to talk about Summer League winners and losers, and I'm going to do my best to remember Zaire Williams, the Memphis Grizzly. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked On Grizzlies. Your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a Tuesday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. I have kept it together to this point, largely because I am not sad that the journey is over. I'm happy that it happened, and hopefully you are as well. Dear listener, dear viewer, however you are checking out Locked On Grizzlies, I appreciate you doing so. It is I, your host, For this episode, Joe Mullinex, yes, that is correct, your host. Michael Cole is one of the millions, apparently, of victims of all of the canceled flights around the country for a variety of issues. So DeMichael wasn't able to make it back in time for this episode, but I'm happy to be here with you for another installment of the podcast. Thank you for checking it out with me. This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down, sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily that is right, something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We are free and available here at Locked On Grizzlies as proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every single day. Like, Comment, rate, review, subscribe. Check us out over on YouTube. Another great day for us over on YouTube. Thanks to our wonderful community of commenters and subscribers. But make sure you're taking us with you on the go as well. Wherever you get an audio podcast, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, all of those places. More than happy to have you with us there as well. Make sure you are double dipping, right? Being an everyday or both on the audio side as well as the video side. Again, I'm Joe Molinax. I've been watching this team for a long time. I moved to Memphis, Tennessee in 2011, which is when I started watching the team, started covering the team in blog form in 2012. I've been doing this for 12 years now in some shape or form. And I can't recall having as much fun watching a summer league game as I did on Monday night watching the Memphis Grizzlies fall to the Miami Heat. And I watched the 2019 team. I watched that team with Brandon Clark win a summer league championship, something that the 2024 version fell just short of by a couple of points uh, there in overtime against Miami. Excuse me. I am appreciative of the youth of this team. And I think that that's what puts it over the hump for me, right? That the youthful exuberance of Gigi Jackson, it's like watching somebody find their confidence in a completely new way. Him understanding that he couldn't be scored, he couldn't be stopped when he got downhill. The framework that he has with his body, the way that he uses his feet, his understanding of offensive positioning, it's also advanced for his age. And I think Gigi might be the main reason that I say what I say when I think this is the most fun I've ever had watching Summer League. It didn't end the way that anybody uh, that rocks Beale Street Blue wanted it to. Right. Of course, we wanted the team to win the championship. But at the end of the day, it is a summer league championship. Kudos to the Miami Heat. Right. Josh Christopher hit a phenomenal three, which was the second to last bucket the Heat made. And I I said on X, tip your cap. If he's going to hit those kinds of shots, Gigi was right in his face. Good defense. If that's going to go in, the Heat just might be better on this night. And it turns out they were two points better. But Jake LaRavia hit a big three in the corner to tie it up yet again. It was a really fun contest to watch. Uh, And I enjoyed watching this team. So thank you to Jason March and Gigi Jackson and Scotty Pippen Jr. It didn't end as well for Scotty as I'm sure as he would have wanted it to. Like the fact that Scotty Pippen Jr. was not named Summer League MVP. We'll talk more about that on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Grizzlies. I thought that was just completely ridiculous. That whole process. Can I want to yell not necessarily at DeMichael, but I want DeMichael to be a part of my yelling, if that makes sense. If you're an everyday or at Locked On Grizzlies, you get it. You understand. I want DeMichael to experience my anger and uh, enjoy it, right? As weird as that might sound. But again, if you're an everyday or it makes sense. I think that he forced things. Scotty Pippen Jr. did, whether it was sometimes on his passes, sometimes on his shots. You know, he shot 9 of 24 from the field in this contest. 
Not his best game. One for eight from three. Did well from the free throw line. He was trying to draw some fouls. Obviously, the 11 assists, the four steals, five rebounds. Anybody with half a brain can see that Scottie Pippen Jr. was the MVP of Las Vegas Summer League. Apparently, the NBA uh, must have the other half of the brain missing. But I digress. This was not his best effort. I do think this was one of Gigi Jackson's best efforts. 11 for 16 from the field, two assists, two steals, nine rebounds. Just a really solid outing for him. And I really enjoyed watching him, again, kind of find his footing, find his confidence. Jake LaRavia in a similar boat, three for eight from three, which I care about more than anything with LaRavia, his ability to come in in a rotation position, eat some minutes if he needs to, score the basketball. I don't need him to be this dominant 21-shot attempts per game guy. It's not what he's going to be with the big league club. But he's a competent end-of-bench NBA player. Jake LaRavia being moved on from, like Zaire Williams has been moved on from, and we'll close out the show with that later on in the program. Obviously, that's not a priority because LaRavia has shown his value, and Summer League was a major piece of that. He and Gigi both had really strong outings. The Summer League team at the end, because no Camp Spencer out due to injury, because of Zach Eady being out due to injury, it kind of became a a three-man band. Right, You had LaRavia with 32, you had Gigi with 28, and you had Scottie Pippen Jr. with 29. The Grizzlies scored 118 points, and doing some quick math here, 89 of those points came from those three guys. So while Scottie Pippen Jr. could have scored more efficiently, I do think he hurt Memphis in some ways there, maybe forced the ball a few too many times turnover-wise. Where would Memphis be without Scottie Pippen Jr.? I think to Michael has put it really well in the past, talking about the importance of a lead guard in summer league play. Without Scottie Pippen Jr., Memphis doesn't get here. I do think that's true. And I do think that even though he was a reason that things got out of hand, the heat went on a late run. Memphis was up by seven or eight points with about two minutes left. And then Miami went on a run to tie things up. Memphis had to tie it themselves just to get to overtime. But I do believe that for all the flaws of Scotty in this game that were revealed and a reminder perhaps that he is a backup point guard at best, right? That's his role. He is currently on a two-way contract. That's important to remember. These guys are playing summer league for a reason. Either they lack experience, they lack full-blown rotation spots. Scotty Pippen Jr. is someone who is playing summer league because he was viewed as necessary to get those reps because he didn't get the kinds of reps that he should get with the big league club. Whatever the case might be, he took a leap forward over the span of these last two weeks, and that matters a lot more than the smaller sample size of one game. Do I wish that it would have gone better for him in the end? Absolutely. But at the same time, Memphis doesn't get to this point in the Summer League Championship game without Scottie Pippen Jr., so you live and die by that sword. I was really impressed with how Jason March coached and managed the game. I think that this was a good experience for him to be in that spot now that he's a full assistant coach on the staff of the Grizzlies. It gave him valuable opportunities to have a line of sight into what Taylor Jenkins does on a nightly basis when the NBA is in season. And that will be valuable in terms of providing input, data entry, whatever the case might be. And I'll also have experience with a Cam Spencer, a Zach Eady, uh, a Jalen Wells, who we'll talk more about later in the show. He will have the ability to talk to Taylor and the other coaches about these guys more in depth because he's actually worked with them in that environment. And don't underestimate that. That matters a lot. That's a significant thing. So shout out to Jason March. I have a feeling we'll talk more about him here in a little bit as well under the Summer League winners portion of the program. But let me know. In the comments, hit me up on X at Joe Mullinax. How do you feel about the Grizzlies after that summer league overtime championship loss? The Heat made shots, man, and the Grizzlies were taking charges and they were competing. Again, I talked about that on yesterday's show. I just wanted to see them compete. I loved the energy of that game. It felt like a regular season game that had some meaning to it. These teams competed and they played hard. Miami made better shots, tip the cap. They took advantage of that last opportunity that Memphis didn't have a chance to take advantage of. So the Heat get the win. They deserved it. Memphis had a wonderful summer league, and we're going to talk about some guys that won and lost as part of that summer league experience 
coming up next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die whip alive. eBay Motors has something you need, or everything you need, excuse me, to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Things like superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die whip, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your car every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die whip alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to United States customers. When we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, we're talking Summer League winners and losers over the span of the entire process, Utah and Vegas. Stick around. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax. Happy to have you with me wherever you're checking out the show, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, whatever the case might be. Again, no to Michael Cole. Travel issues have him missing this episode of Locked On Grizzlies, but he should be back, fingers crossed, with us for our Wednesday edition of the podcast. Miami defeats Memphis in the Summer League Championship. We've been talking about that throughout the show. I want to take a look at the grander scheme. I want to take a look at the bigger picture with Summer League winners and losers. So I've got a few guys that should feel pretty good coming out of their Summer League experience, and I've got a few guys who maybe should be a little bit nervous coming out of their Summer League experience. Maybe not for their role in the roster, but how things went down. Uh, let's start off with the positives, right? Let's start off with a winner. And one of my Summer League winners is the aforementioned Jason March, the head coach of the Summer League Memphis Grizzlies. It was great to see him in that role. I've talked about it a couple of times here on Lockdown Grizzlies. I had a chance to interview Coach March on a previous podcast years upon years ago, and it was a lot of fun. I have had, always had a lot of respect for Coach March. We've talked a couple of times off and on throughout the years, and I really do think that he – did impressive things, knowing the use of timeouts and challenges, the certain sets that he called, the confidence that he had in his guys. Sometimes that backfires, right? Scotty Pippen Jr. gets you to that promised land point, makes a mistake that maybe costs you a point or a possession that may have cost you the game. But again, it's a macro and micro thing, especially in the case of summer league basketball. It's almost like a JV game in high school or college, right? If you play JV sports or if you're a coach of JV sports, why does JV exist? JV exists for the purpose of development for the varsity. Summer League is a lot like that. Scotty Pippen Jr. got better over the course of these last couple of weeks for having been part of Summer League. He's another winner. He should have been the MVP of Summer League for crying out loud. Again, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Jason March, if there was a coach of the Summer League, for me it would be Jason March because he didn't have Cam Spencer for part of it. He didn't have Zach Eady for most of it. Imagine if those two guys had played in the Miami Heat finale. I think maybe things would have gone a little bit differently for the Memphis Grizzlies. And, you know, Miami can play that game too, of course, in terms of young players being on their roster. But the fact remains that this team was not at full strength for most of the run, and yet they were still undefeated until Monday night. So that's a credit to Jason March as a coach. We talked a lot about Scottie Pippen Jr. His growth as a point guard, a facilitator, his ability to get to the rim, dish out to open shooters, the effort that he displayed as a rebounder, the GG Jackson three that tied things up later in the game, doesn't happen without Scottie Pippen Jr.'s effort on the offensive glass. So, so much of what Pippen Jr. did was driven by his own abilities, right? His own internal clock, his own growth focus, and his development as a, not just as a player, but as a competitor. That carries significant weight for me. So Scotty Pippen Jr. would be another one of my winners. And then my third winner uh, would be one Gigi Jackson. And this may come as a surprise because I've been hard on Gigi's passing and all those sorts of things. And I still think that that matters as Gigi moves up to the big leagues, right? As he potentially is a key rotation player for a team that's trying to contend for a Western Conference Finals. That's the reality of the Memphis Grizzlies. And Gigi Jackson figures to be part of that conversation. 
GG needs to be a better facilitator of offense for others in order for him to play minutes alongside the John Moran, Desmond Baines, and Jaron Jackson Juniors of the world. But as far as me wanting GG Jackson to be a bucket getter, you know, I've been giving DeMichael Cole a lot of credit around here for his Scotty Pippen Jr. takes. I've been calling for GG Jackson, the microwave scorer off the bench for a while now, and I feel more confident than ever before that G.G. Jackson could be that guy. He's a mismatch problem. If you put him on fours, nobody's going to be able to defend him consistently. If you put him on threes, they're going to have issues with his physicality and his length and his size, the speed and the athleticism if he's playing the four. He's a combo forward mismatch nightmare. And I think that his ability to create for himself off the dribble is going to be extremely valuable in that reserve setting. I'm still not sold on him as a starter, at least not yet. I do want to stress that part of it. I think if you watch him play, you see what makes him special. You see the talent. I'm excited for all of those things, just like you are. But I'm talking about this coming season, and I think him as a reserve is best use of him in that eighth or ninth man spot, and hopefully he becomes a sixth man in terms of being that scoring pop off the bench. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? we got to talk some losers. One of my losers for this summer league is Zach Eady, and it's not because – he should feel bad about getting injured, right? That's not at all what I'm saying. Don't call me a jerk in the comments and say, oh, Joe's a jerk because he, he hate, he, Zach Eady's injury prone. They were freak ankle accidents. It's more the situation that's a loser for Zach Eady than Zach Eady himself. I'm just really into the Olympics, man. I'm not going to watch every inch or mile or minute, but I think that it's a really cool opportunity for people to compete at the highest level of their sport representing their country. And Canada has a chance to do some things at the international level that they've never done before. So if Edie had gone and had that experience, would that have been better than what he did with Memphis? To me, the answer is yes. And again, it's not necessarily anybody's fault, but just the, the opportunity cost, the lost opportunity for Zach Edie. Maybe that's the better way to phrase it in terms of losing. Another loser for me when it comes to the Grizzlies Summer League is Jalen Wells. Flashes were few and far between. He did some good defensive things in the championship game against Miami. He was an important defender. He fouls out after 32 minutes of play. Fouled out in overtime, I believe it was. But just so hit or miss in terms of his shooting. Three for eight from the field. One for three from three. Remember, he shot six of seven in the semifinal game just a couple of nights ago. You expect that from a rookie. I think I said that on yesterday's show. You expect the ups and downs. It just would have been nice for him to be in a spot where he could have actually contributed more and maybe not made a Scottie Pippen Jr. feel like they had to force up some shots, right? So Jalen Wells, he's a full roster member, right? There is no two-way contract for him. He has a standard NBA contract. He's going to be with the Grizzlies. Maybe they send him down to South Haven to get reps. But he is not a two-way player. He is a Memphis Grizzly through and through, according to his contract. I would have liked to see more, especially in the championship game. I think he made some boneheaded errors, a couple of turnovers and inopportune times, the fouls like we talked about. He had highlights, too. He took a great charge to force the turnover on the heat that got Memphis an extra possession late. It wasn't all bad, but I would have wanted to see more out of Jalen Wells. I don't think that that is that crazy of a thing to say. And then my final loser would be the NBA at large. And the reason I say that is, really, Scottie Pippen Jr. is not the MVP. Gigi Jackson is not the MVP. The guy that you picked to be the MVP was second team All-NBA. Riddle me this, dear listener, dear viewer. What kind of sense does that make? Right? Tell me. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on X, at Joe Mullinex. What sense in what world does being a second team all NBA summer league player in Vegas make for that person to be the MVP? Tell me you don't care about your own darn summer league without telling me you don't care about your own darn summer league. That's just a preview of what I'm going to talk about with DeMichael tomorrow. Uh, That's just ridiculous to me. If you follow this Vegas summer league, the Memphis Grizzlies, again, kudos to the Miami Heat. They obviously were the champions. Memphis had two guys on that team. Memphis had two dudes that really were impressive. Are we saying that Gigi took votes from Scottie Pippen Jr.? That'd be absurd. It should have been Scottie Pippen Jr., right? 
Didn't play his best game against the Heat, but he is the reason Memphis was there. I'm frustrated by that, and we'll probably talk a lot more about that on our next episode of Locked On Grizzlies. We're going to finish up this episode talking about remembering the good times of Zaire Williams, how Zaire Williams will be remembered in Memphis. We'll talk about that next here on the program. But first, I want to remind you that Locked On Grizzlies is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every single day. We have the Locked on Sports Today channel now on YouTube, the first of its kind streaming channel 24-7 on YouTube. Make sure you're checking it out there as well as on the Free Fire TV channels app. Two wonderful places to check out great programming from all across the Locked On Podcast Network. So again, Locked On Sports Today, check it out on Amazon Fire or the Free TV channels app as well as over on YouTube. This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I got to tell you, they're some of my favorite things. Of course, that's probably the same for you, dear listener, dear viewer. I love them so much that I don't want them to stop. But Summer League's over, right? The Olympics are about to begin. But sports aren't sportsing as much as we'd like them to, at least here in America. And that can get frustrating. But FanDuel is looking out for us. They let me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime that I am in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That is correct. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. So what are you waiting for? Go over to FanDuel.com now. Start making the most out of your summer with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. We're closing out this episode of Locked On Grizzlies, remembering Zaire Williams in Memphis. Stick around. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, closing out this Tuesday edition of the show. No DeMichael Cole with me. Should be back on Wednesday. Again, I'm going to go deeper into my anger at the NBA for not caring about their own summer league enough to properly name an MVP. I, I do want to get DeMichael's take on our final topic regarding Zaire Williams because he hasn't been on the show since that trade went down. That'll be Wednesday's show, but we're going to close out this episode with my memories of Zaire Williams. And... It's a loaded question because I think my first memory of Zaire Williams is how I wished that he had not been talked about the way that Memphis Grizzlies general manager Zach Kleiman talked about him in the aftermath of the 2021 draft. And that is unfair, admittedly, because I was a supporter of Kleiman acknowledging that Williams was a project. Right, because I remember coming out and saying this is the first time that Zach Kleiman and the Memphis Grizzlies front office had come and said this dude needs time. Be patient with him, and I was willing to be patient because they were open and honest about what it was and the uniqueness and the talent of Zaire Williams, a legitimate six foot nine perimeter player. We talk about Gigi Jackson at six foot nine as a combo forward. Can he play the four long term? You're not having that conversation about Zaire Williams. His frame won't allow it. And to be honest with you, his skill set won't allow it. He is a guard, a true perimeter wing at that size. That's enticing. Look at what the NBA is built around wings that can do multiple things. If you're going to take a swing in that direction, Zaire Williams made sense. Trey Murphy the third, perhaps in hindsight, would have made more sense. But Trey Murphy the third at 10 would have been a reach, at least at the time. Maybe in a 2021 NBA draft redraft, that wouldn't be the case. But we have to live in the environment that we were in. I loved the fact that they got Steven Adams in that deal because I thought he was going to do a lot of the things that Jonas Valanciunas did without the usage. And at that time, I was a very vocal advocate that it was time to take the training wheels off the Grizzlies offense. And the Steven Adams aspect worked out pretty well. But the Zaire Williams part, not so much. I remember Kleiman coming out and saying, this guy's a project. I remember the gigantic water jug. You know the one. The one that they had Zaire drinking out of, trying to help him gain weight. Didn't take fully, right? His development, for whatever reason, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually maybe, Whatever the case might be, it just didn't click in Memphis. And I think it goes back to what I talked about yesterday, square peg, round hole. Zaire Williams has talent, and I think it's going to shine in Brooklyn. He's going to be given opportunity with the Nets that he would never have gotten with the Memphis Grizzlies. It just wouldn't happen. What he does with that opportunity is going to be up to him. But 
I'll always remember watching and seeing flashes of Zaire. Remember when he defended Steph Curry in the playoffs a couple of years ago? That was kind of cool, right? His using his length, his size, doing some things admirably. He hit a big shot in the playoffs a couple of times. There were flashes of what Zaire Williams could have been. But then there were failed attempts in summer leagues to try to get him to be a facilitating guard. And there were too many times to count of them trying to make him a three-point shooter when he thrived in the mid-range. And so much of the Zaire Williams experience for me is connected to missed out potential. Whose fault is that? It's hard to say. Do I think Zaire Williams bombed his development? No, I don't think he did that at all. I think the young man wanted to do his best. Do I think Zach Kleiman saw an opportunity with likely Franz Wagner and Josh Giddy, two guys perhaps that had been connected to Memphis in a potential trade-up scenario, both of those guys being off the board? Was Kleiman trying to make the most of a bad situation? Maybe. Maybe he wasn't as high on Zaire and he was trying to talk himself into it himself. Maybe it's the coaching staff's fault. How come you can't alter scheme enough to make a player with a mid-range jumper as nice, as skillfully displayed as Zaire Williams is part of scheme? Are you that hell-bent on your system that you can't adapt it for pieces around you? Is that one of the reasons that Taylor Jenkins has had to make the changes he's made on his staff? Not because of Zaire Williams, but because of that pig-headedness. I think there's a conversation to be had there. Part of coaching is acknowledging what your players and personnel are capable of doing and fitting scheme around that reality. I'm not convinced that Taylor Jenkins has been a successful coach doing that in particular. It's easy to say that when you have a generational talent in John Morant, one of the top 10 or 15 players in the world. But when you have a Zaire Williams, a talented young man, who has a specific skill set that could have been tapped into more, and yet it wasn't because he didn't fit the three-point shooting, the attacking the basket. Yeah, Zaire maybe could have fit that mold a little bit better in his own right. But how can you expect a player that had the college experience at Stanford that Zaire did, that had the COVID experience in terms of not getting the reps in a normal environment, Is Zaire just kind of a victim of his circumstances? And do we see him explode in Brooklyn? I think there's an outside chance we do. And that's probably my biggest thing that I'm going to remember. The what might have been. What might have been with Zaire? Thankfully, we don't have to wax too nostalgic about it because Gigi Jackson exists. If you replace Zaire Williams with Gigi Jackson in your line of thinking, all is right with the world. And maybe some people down the road will. But I've been following this team too long to do that. I'm going to remember how Zaire Williams could have been another key piece, another long wing, another defensive presence, another offensive changeup that didn't fit the vision. And because of that, he is now going to a team where he can maybe find his own path, a team that is not currently interested in winning and will give him his chance to develop in a much less stressful environment. If I'm surprisingly positive about Zaire Williams to you, I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of surprised myself. But you can't just blame the player in these situations. Was he put in an environment to be successful? Was scheme adapted? Did he get chances to do the things that you knew he was good at? And I don't know about you, but I can't confidently say that. Memphis needed to make this trade because they need to win now, and this helps them in that roster-building process. But is it possible that two years from now we look at a much-improved Zaire Williams and see him as the one that got away? It wouldn't surprise me. Thank you so much for being with me on this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies. I appreciate it. Tomorrow, DeMichael should be back with us. I'll get his take on my Zaire Williams philosophy. I'll let him kind of wrap up with a bow his summer league experience, the way that he took in these summer Grizzlies. A lot of fun things, a lot of room for growth. That'll be the focus of our Wednesday episode. Make sure you're liking, commenting, rating, reviewing, subscribing, wherever you get your podcast. Check out Locked On Sports today, as well as checking out uh, over on YouTube. Make sure you're checking it out as part of the free Fire Amazon TV channels app. 
Make sure you are checking us out on Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Apple, literally anywhere you can get a podcast, you can get Locked On Grizzlies. I am so thankful that you make us a part of your NBA and Memphis Grizzlies content consumption each and every time an episode drops. Why don't you come back tomorrow? Why don't you become an everydayer if you aren't already one? And if you are one, thank you so much for being one on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, YouTube, wherever it may be. Check us out tomorrow. Until then, have a good one. Stay locked in.